Programming tutorials are not programming reality. Let's talk about it. Today's video was inspired by Alex Grassel. I hope I got your name right with this comment. Alex says, in your videos, every aspect of C programming looks clear and straightforward. In my code, things just segfault and dump. And yes, based on the emoji afterwards, I'm sure Alex is joking, he's trying to be funny. But this comment also made me think, you know, this is something we probably need to talk about. Because what you see on my videos and other programming tutorials is not programming reality. You know, on a tutorial, everything looks easy, smooth. There's no error messages or maybe there's one, but everything looks really smooth. Just logically, you build up the code, everything is beautiful. No fuss, no muss, it's just easy. And I know you professional programmers out there, you get it. But for you beginners, I worry a little bit that you might be looking at this and saying, oh, that is not the same experience that I have. And therefore, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I'm not very good at it. Maybe it's me. So today's video is a real talk pep talk for you beginners. First thing to get out there is I have been developing software for almost 30 years. I have seen a lot of error messages. I have had a lot of frustrating days where I just wanted to put my forehead through a screen. You know those days when you say, ah, I've, I'm losing my mind. Like this just doesn't make any sense. So I mentioned that just to say, give yourself some time, be patient. I definitely make fewer mistakes than I did when I was two years in. But that's only part of the story. I can't speak for everyone's YouTube videos, but let me tell you about mine. When I make a video, I want it to be quick and concise. I wanna give you something useful as quickly and efficiently as possible. And here's why I like this approach. For one, it means I don't have to upload two hour long videos, which is great, cause that would be a pain. It also means that the experienced programmers on my channel can watch the video, get the gist and go, oh cool, thanks, and they move on. While the beginners can slow it down, play it back more slowly, rewatch it, pause it. You know, you can take your time and move. That's the great thing about video. You can move at the pace that you want. And yes, I know that in some of my previous videos, I went too fast. I'm still learning, trying to figure out my pacing and trying to get better at it. But the point is, is there's a lot in this process that you just don't see because there are a lot of things that I don't record and things that I remove. Let me just take you through what the process looks like when I make one of my videos. Now, not all my videos are the same. My process has evolved over the few years that I've been doing YouTube, and it varies from video to video depending on how much time I have and what the topic is that we're actually looking at. But this is just a general overview. It's a pretty good picture of what my video making looks like. Okay, so here's how it goes. Step one, Jacob stops and thinks for a while about what to include and what not to include and how best to present the material so people won't get confused. Then say I'm doing a video about shared memory, which I recently did. I've got a pretty good idea what I wanna do because I've messed with shared memory before, but I'm going to take a quick refresher look at the man pages just to make sure that I know what functions I'm dealing with. This takes a little while. Then I start programming. I set up the files I think I'm going to need and I start messing around with what might go in the example. At this stage, I'm exploring. I have an idea what I want this to look like, but I'm not really worried about getting it right. I'm not really worried about detours. I'm not worried about flow and pacing. I just wanna make sure that the functions I'm teaching are working in the way that I expect them to. Along the way, I'm adding code, compiling it, running it, getting lots of error messages, both compile time issues and runtime issues, which I debug as I go. And I'm also referring back to the documentation as I go throughout this process. How long does this take? Well, it depends on the tutorial. Occasionally I run into something that I don't understand and I might have to spend an extra hour digging deeper to really try to understand what's going on. Or sometimes I don't have time for that and so I stick it on the shelf. And I have quite a few videos that I've started working on, but there's something I've got to figure out. Either something technically that I'm not quite comfortable with, or I'm still trying to figure out how to explain this topic in a way that's not going to confuse you. So after working through this example for a while, at some point I start to feel like, you know, I'm ready to teach you about it. But often at this point, I look at the code I've concocted and it's too messy. It's the naming maybe isn't the way I want it. Maybe the structure is a little confusing. Maybe I did something sloppy that goes against some advice that I gave in a previous video. Please forgive me if I ever do that. So then I go through and I identify the parts I don't like. At this point, the tutorial is taking shape in my head. And then what do I do? I start from scratch. Seriously, anytime that I'm working on code that I'm going to present to students, I start from scratch. I basically wipe it all clean because I want to see it through your eyes and I want to, I want to see how it builds up. And so I'll start from scratch and, and start recreating 
what I created before, but a cleaner version, basically looking to see, are there anything, is there anything confusing or are there any pitfalls that I need to be paying attention to? This is usually the point where I actually start recording. Note that at this point, I've already done it at least once. I've already made a bunch of mistakes. I've seen a lot of error messages, maybe all the error messages I'm going to see. Everything is in fast cash up here in my brain. And so it is not in the least bit surprising that things go smoothly. That's the point. Of course, as I go along, I'm still taking breaks to go look at the documentation, to go make sure that things are making sense. Sometimes I still mistype things and I remove those just because I see them as distractions. Basically, all the editing I do is an attempt to minimize distractions, to spare you from having to take the meandering path through this project that I took. Now, moving forward, I'm still gonna do that, but I just want you to be aware of it. I want you to understand what it is you're seeing and so you don't get frustrated and beat yourself up just because you can't recreate a custom web server in 10 minutes and see. And this also brings me to one of the things on my list of things that uh, high school did to mess you up as a programmer. This certainly doesn't apply to everyone's high school experience, but a lot of students go through high school and they get the message that the key to success and happiness in life is getting the right answer and not making mistakes. So then every time they see a site fault, they think, I screwed up. They take every compiler error to be a personal attack or a sign of their incompetence. And in reality, that compiler is just trying to be helpful to you. I know sometimes the error messages aren't super helpful or aren't super clear, but it's trying. Now I'm going to resist the fatherly and professorial urge to extend this into a grand metaphor for life. But in programming and in computer science, mistakes are unavoidable. I make them, you are going to make them. The only people who don't make mistakes, who aren't occasionally confused, who don't occasionally struggle are people who are no longer programming. They're people who have left the game. So cut yourself some slack, take a deep breath, subscribe to this channel if you don't wanna miss my next video. You know the next time that I don't show you all the mistakes that I make. Like this video if it helped and made your life better, and I'll see you next week, if not sooner.